Okay, well, I think we should get straight into it then, because it sounds like we've got a lot to cover off today. And yes, you know, we so have. <laughs> it's amazing, Christine, to have you like on Wellness Uncut and for you to be able to express all of your wisdom and knowledge, and especially during you know, this, this quite tumultuous time on the planet. And I guess, actually, that first of all, I, I just want to know a little bit more about you, because you've had such a fascinating life. You were actually born in Australia and you grew up in Australia and you were subject... Born in Perth, Western Australia. Yeah. In Perth? Uh-huh. Well, yeah. Oh, I didn't realise that. So there you go. That's and I'm where actually, I am. And I'm actually coming to Perth to do a three-day Pleiadian seminar next year and then Melbourne and then Brisbane. So I've never worked in Australia. Um, and my guidance is to come. I, I worked at Uluru for the first time. That was December... Um, January, oh no, January this year. And it was um, really an amazing experience to be in Australia working for the very first time in all these years. And it was really beautiful to be there. And I was so well received by the people. Um, it really touched my heart a lot. I know. Well, I've, I've watched a couple of the interviews that, uh, that you've done um, based around <laughs> your experience at Allure after the Cosmic Consciousness event and you know one one thing in particular i found quite mind-blowing is when you when you did the perimeter walk and then you ended up in the cave and you had quite an unusual experience in that cave didn't you could you tell people what happened when you managed to kind of align with the dream time energy well it was very profound i i have a very strong connection you say um a connection with the aboriginals and i always have um had that connection I knew I was meant to go and it was like, you know, I didn't know what to expect, but going there was like beyond anything I could ever have imagined. It was like coming back to a place that I had been with my Pleiadian family when they first originally anchored on the, on the earth and brought the dreaming of the 10th, 16th dimensional dreaming of dream time energy to the aboriginals because they actually the pleiadians transmitted these teachings right across the planet to all native people the shamanic worlds but this is different with the aboriginals this is the dream time or the dreaming space that the pleiadians call the dream dreaming where there's the 10th to 16 dimensional um, realities and they brought that to the aboriginals um, and I was with my family at that time. So when I came into that cave, it was like, like nothing I could ever have imagined possible. It was like returning back to that space. My Pleiadian family were all around me. Well, they're very much connected to me all the time. I'm fully Pleiadian. I've embodied my full Pleiadian aspect in this physical body. But of course, I have my human self as well. So... Um, I went into the cave and was immediately transported into this, re this remembering, this reunion, into this pure space of light. It was beyond anything I could have ever imagined, anything beyond anything I've experienced so far in my experiences, and I've had many. And in that space, I was in the higher realm communion, a, a, a vast a vastly more expanded higher realm communion than I've ever been in before. And it was like I, within that space, everything I ever needed was, was there with me. I was in, embodied in that, that, that light, that consciousness, that reconnection, that reunion. And I stayed there for a long time with my Pleiadian family and then came back. But I came back totally transformed, carrying this divine frequency of myself, understanding and remembering the holy essence of what exists within that holy trinity within the 10th to 16th dimensional space of the dreaming. And so after that in profound experience, then, and I was part of the conference, I'd come, I was asked to present there and that morning of the 21st, it was very interesting because I was to present I'd done a transmission of light the day before. I worked four hours the day before in the conference. And I was presenting for four hours that next day. But it was a discourse. It wasn't a transmission. But I knew I woke up and the Pleiadian said, the gateway has already begun to open at Uluru. 
because that was the day of that conjunction, that Pluto Saturn conjunction, when there was to be a an opening of the gateway of that 10th to 16th dimensional energy of the dreaming. And I'd had information on that. I channeled it through what was going to happen. But they said, no, you have to transmit to, to the people at the conference. The opening's already started and they need this transmission from of the energy of that opening. So I went to the organizer and I just said, you know, can I change what I was supposed to do today? Um, and she said, absolutely. And then I brought the transmission through and it was like a, an explosion actually that took place. It exploded through me and out. It was a great honor and a privilege to bring the essence in and transmit it to through the hearts of everybody there. So that's, you know, part of my work. Wow, yeah, and it sounds amazing. So I guess the questions that I've got for you based around that is like, first of all, when you're in the cave and you experience those high vibrational frequencies of the, of the dreaming, and um, what did that look like? I mean, obviously, you, you described how it felt, you know, and it was like a reconnection to your divine essence. But, but what did that visually appear like for you? What started to happen was the wall of the cave began to... Um, transmit this this energy of light but it also started to move it was like a tunnel started to open up in the wall of the cave and it was like a swirling mass a swirling tunnel that i was drawn into like a magnet i was like i was i would liken it to a birthing canal really because i was i was taken through that tunnel into the light into this glorious reunion of a higher realm component that I haven't entered before and I didn't understand and, and I was totally re recalibrated transformed on every possible level all the cells in my body went through a transmutation but my consciousness I went through a, a, like a birthing of a, a higher level of my own consciousness and so I I came into an understanding of, of truth of understanding of the multidimensionality that we all are. I've always thought I, well, I perceived a certain level of that and understood it, but I came into a total new understanding of that truth. And my vision has totally changed. And my sense of what's real, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm always aligned to that higher consciousness beyond our illusion here. But this took me to a whole new state of understanding and knowledge and clarity uh, for me to bring out to humanity. So <laughs> it's in me. It kind of was like infused in me, this knowledge. Um, and so I became something very different and I've stabilized that way um, ever since. I am going back to Uluru in December. I have to go and I will return to the conference. I've been invited back. If it goes ahead, of course, we know we have all this issue with the coronavirus happening, but um, I, my, my, my intention is to be there. For sure. So you, you touched on coronavirus there, and I guess it's really important to kind of look at the play in perspective on, on what's happening in the world right now, because there is a lot of fear and there's a lot of misinformation. But, you know, from their perspective, like, why is this happening? Well, they told me in December that the whole world, um, the consciousness of the world would shift, the energetic would shift, which would unearth a tremendous amount of density. Um, and so there would be an upswing in the drama. Um, something would be coming onto the planet that would create a huge upheaval for mankind because we need to. We need to be shifted from our you know, perspective, that limited perspective of humanity, of being in control and everything being in its place. And in that, as a human being, when we're in that kind of cozy little setting of everything being kind of pretty good and in control, then we don't shift. We don't reach for that other part of ourselves, that higher sacred part of ourselves. So I knew there was going to be some, some real cracks opened up that would create some havoc um, and I didn't know what form that was going to take. But the Pleiadians have been speaking about this really upheaval coming for humanity as a whole. And so they see it 
as it's just breaking the old molds of the illusion that we have held in place between us. I mean, we all hold it. And that fear and that struggle that the, the human ego mind has, it starts to tailspin and go out of control. And it's in those moments where the ego mind is, mind is reeling and doesn't have a handle on everything that we can be repositioned into a new ourselves that exists just beyond the veil. So as we start to crack because the ego mind's not got its hold on us because it's in a panic with the fear and this unknown, then guess what? There's a chip that takes place. A crack opens up and we start to be able to align to that sacred multidimensional nature that we are in reality. So this is part of the plan, the divine plan for us, because ultimately we as a human race are to make this evolutionary jump, jump together. It's, you know, the Pleiadians, the spiritual realms, the galactic community, they can set up the energies, they can support us, will. So this time, the veils are thin, really thin, for us to much more easily reconnect with the sacred part of ourselves. And while the ego mind is really like in its tailspin, it's a very, very potent time for us to be reset, to, for us to reset ourselves. No one does it for us, but we can do it for ourselves much more readily right now. Excellent. So in that respect, then, would do the Pleiadians, um, do they see that the, the humanity will return to what it was before this happened? Or will, will that shift be so significant moving forward that, we, that the Earth and humanity will never be the same again? It will never be the same again. You see, we've only just begun this. It's only just started. This is like a drop in the ocean to what it's going to be. And this is not about putting fear into anybody, this information. It's saying you have your own sacred nature within your heart. It's time for reconnection. So you start operating and drawing from that part of your higher knowing to support you now to change the way you do things in your life. It's like it's not going to be the same. And so even for me, all my work has dissolved right through to next to September and probably maybe even to the end of the year. All of a sudden I have this whole open space and it's like this is for me to evolve in another level with myself, another level with my Pleiadian family. Everybody has their own sacred family of origin that exists off planet that's here right now to support you at this time for your next step of your evolution. So we will not be returning back. It's going to be a crack. It's like doors closing and we won't be able to go back because it just won't be there anymore. It won't be the same energetic. The energetics have already started to shift. We will see something different emerge, which is glorious. And we will start to see more of who we are the sacred part of ourselves and in each other rather than into the, all these splits and separations. But it can only evolve, evolve through the sacred reconnection. It's our higher self that can hold our humanity with love and compassion and patience for our perfectly imperfect state of being human. We don't have to reach perfection for enlightenment. Just that self-acceptance of our imperfection, that self-love. So we need to bring the compassion to that human part that's afraid right now, to hold ourselves with that love and compassion and allow the sacred part of ourselves to come into our lives and play an active role in our lives now. And that is going to, that is, it'll start with those of us on the path, those of, the, of us that have been consciously working towards this transmutation of ourselves, this self resurrection. And then outwards, ripple outwards to all of humanity at a certain point. So 
this is what the Pleiadians have shown me. And they say we're doing really great. All right. So I'm interested in um, finding out a little bit more about, you know, the, the, the new dawn, because this is really what you're talking about, isn't it? It's, it's the new dawn on, on the planet. And, um, y you know, you've written a couple of books about, about this as well, haven't you, during your, during your career? Um, one of them <laughs> which is called the Pleiadian Initiations of Light and the other one, the Pleiadian Principles for Living. Can you, can you explain a little bit more about some of the, you know, the, the intricacies okay. of those books? And I have my third book also, The Pleiadian Promise. The books are amazing because they're very unique because, you know, you read a chapter and then you have an audio file channeled that allows the reader to go into a direct experience with the Pleiadians. This is the purpose of the books, to give people an understanding of this new dawning time, which is what we're talking about right now, where Earth comes into a new state of itself, a resurrection of enlightenment, of self-realization. The Pleiadians are here to bring information and understanding and clarity to you as a human being of how you can move into your enlightenment process. It's a natural process. So this is important. And Hayden, if you lose me, just put your hand up so I know that you can no longer hear me. Sure. That might be supportive. So the books are very powerful and very potent. They're what the Pleiadians call multidimensional. Because when you're listening to the audio file connected to the chapter, you can listen to it once and go through a profound change. And then you listen to it again. It's like listening to it for the first time all over again because you move into another level of dimensional uh, transmissions from the channeled audio file. So the first book, Pleiadian Initiations of Light, has 12 chapters, 12 audio files. And it helps you to align to the Pleiadians and to your own galactic family of origin that exists off planet. It helps you to align to the natural forces, also to the spiritual realms, the light beings, the masters, the angels, because they all work together right now. They're part of a universal team. So the audio files, you, take, go, you read the chapter once, you listen to the file, you might read the chapter again, listen to it again, but you make your way through the different chapters. So the purpose of the first book is to introduce you to the Pleiadians and who they are. And they're here for all of humanity. They're not here just for those who believe in the Pleiadians. They're here to relink you to your own multidimensional sacred nature. And they bring the tools and the information. So it's all self-empowerment. And that's what I like. It's Excellent. about you birthing you. They simply, the transmissions of light, simply bring a light around you so that you can readily realign to your higher realm, sacred nature, your higher self, and start operating from that level, on a conscious level. And they also teach about how you work with your humanity and how important it is to honor and love that human part, not to push it away, but to allow it to come in and to blend in the human part with the sacred part of yourself, because that's part of our enlightenment process is to carry and allow the human part to flourish and change our relationship with our humanness. Absolutely. And I suppose that's, you know, even more important, you know, almost imperative to to have tools like this during such a trans, you know, a transformational time on our planet. Um, you know, we've um, you know, we kind of have to take responsibility for our own, um, you know, rising from the ashes, you know, or, or rebirth. And and these tools are, are available to we help us. It's so essential for us to begin to understand exactly who we are within our humanity and how to manage the fear and the struggle, that third dimensional illusion and how to bypass it and to work directly through our hearts. So we're 
We're not operating in the illusion. We're operating with the truth. Your first contact with the Palladians was back in 1994, wasn't it? You were out for a walk through the woods and you turned the corner and you went into a meadow and you saw something ahead of you, didn't you? Could you explain what happened that day and, you know, who you were before that incident? Well, that incident changed my life because when I turned into the meadow was this huge Pleiadian spaceship and my Pleiadian family was walking towards me. Now, in those days, I didn't believe in aliens or spaceships. And if I could, I would have run. So the Pleiadians grabbed me telepathically and they actually reminded me of my pre-agreement of my life with them before I came onto this earth plane and that I was to be, come in and be a bridge between humanity and the Pleiadians. And they reminded me of my mission here. I don't really remember getting home that day. I found myself in bed with this light pouring in, my Pleiadian light coming into me. And I was actually bedridden for um, two months while my full Pleiadian aspect came into the cells of my body. And I was surrounded by angels, the Pleiadians, and I didn't want any of this. It's like I didn't want to be a Pleiadian. I didn't want this mission. And I was in tremendous conflict. And one day the angels came to me and they said, the Pleiadians are part of the God consciousness state. You are Pleiadian. You have your mission. There is no separation. And so I had to open up to letting go and assuming my mission here. And then I got up and I was transformed, totally transformed and carrying this higher frequency of my Pleiadian consciousness. And that was when I started my work through the world just, and I actually work, I've been working 10 to 11 months through the world for the last 20 years or 25 years now, um, bringing the, 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 the energy and doing my work and doing my mission. And now I'm kind of down to about five months a year traveling and we've working from the galactic receiving station, but it transformed my life tremendously. A lot of people left my life. They didn't want, I couldn't lie about it. I had to speak truth and I was carrying this light, this love, and a lot of people were attracted to me and I was kind of invited all over the world to speak and bring the transmissions and the healing light of the Pleiadians to humanity. Beautiful, because it's not just the Pleiadians either that, that you um, are aligned with. Uh, you also have a resonance with the ancient Lemurians and also other beings within the Galactic Federation of Light as well. Yes, yeah, since we, we went up to Grand Marais and were told we had to put together a galactic receiving station, I've had the privilege of aligning and, and working with a lot of the galactic life force groups through the universe, uh, being on the Galactic Council, really getting to know the Lemurians and working alongside Mary and Christ energy, but they also were Pleiadian um, beings. So I'm very, very connected to working in alignment with them as well. So, yes. That's awesome. Now, just going back to the day that you were in that um, meadow and you saw the spaceship in front of you, and you mentioned that your Pleiadian family were coming towards you. What did they look like? You know, how did they appear to you? Were they, were, were they did they look hum, um, human-like? Because there are quite a lot of um, theories that they're they're supposed to be very beautiful with blonde, long blonde hair. But is is that was that the case for you? Well, you know, there's the two types of the, there's the reptilian Pleiadians um, and there's the humanoid type Pleiadians, tall and very thin. And, and understand, because a lot of people think they're in spirit form, but they're not. They're living an incarnation out and part of their mission in this incarnation is to assist humanity uh, on earth. The energy and the essence of them radiates out this pure, unconditional love. So they have that incredible consciousness but they're in humanoid form for sure but much taller and about seven feet tall and very thin and then there's the reptilians 
of the forms of Pleiadians who are also from a you know higher consciousness of light, but you know not a comfortable form for us as human beings, um, but carrying incredible state of love also who play a very important role here on the earth plane. Excellent. Okay. Now that's interesting. Just to clarify that, because there are quite a lot of misinterpretations. And of course, you know, people that have come in as star seeds, um, Pleiadian star seeds, um, yes. you know, there's a lot of um, uh, people being unsure about their physical characteristics as a human, but they can really take any human form uh, when, when their souls come into, into the human as a star seed, right? That's correct. And there are a lot of Pleiadian star seeds here. There are also a lot of Lemurian star seeds and Octurian and Syrian star seeds. I work with people um, up in the Galactic Receiving Station, help people really stabilize themselves or find their family of origin that's off planet because that's an important part of people's enlightenment process. Part of the destiny right now is that your family of origin off planet is supporting you right now in your life for your enlightenment process and the more you open to that the more they can come in and assist you because none of us originated here from planet earth we all originated off planet we like to think of ourselves or some of us do as human beings and just from planet earth i'm just from here but the fact is that's not true and that family of origin has a, a an incredible dimension of unconditional love that they can bring and bring nutrition to you through that loving force and support you in the completion of your mission we all have a mission here those that of us are awake to support humanity and the transition of uh, us here on planet earth um, so the more we can reconnect to that family of origin the better and my books like my second book is um 20, 27 audio files um, and you work through that to realign back to your family of origin. It's amazing that there is there are actually tools because a lot of the people um, who tune into my channel on YouTube um, you know once they've discovered the information or you know start understanding that they're either Syrian or Andromedan or Pleiadian they, yeah. um, they, they, they then want to know you know what their mission is and, and actually how they can um, reconnect to their families of origin and their star system so you know for for you guys you know this this is the way that you can do it you can you can actually do the work yourself via the tools that Christine provides so you know just um, align with her work if you really want, are interested in in discovering more and finding those tools because you know the the receiving station that you that you have that you mentioned before could you could you tell them what does that what does that actually look like christine you know and where amazing. exactly is it it's amazing you know we we would we i just finished right finishing my second book and i was up in grand marais in a little cabin just so i could get it completed and i'm coming down the mountain and the palladian said okay now we want to show you your new home and I said, what? And they said, yes, turn here, turn here, turn here. And there was a for sale sign. And they said, now go down this drive. And we went in onto this land right on our, uh, it had three acres on the beach in Grand Marais. They said, this is your new home. This is where you have to be now. We need you to move here as quickly as you can. So we, we, we looked at the, land the next day with the agent and we put in an offer and within days that land that land that property that house was ours and so we arrived there yeah minus 40 degrees um fahrenheit actually not even centigrade in the middle of winter and we started um being there the energy was profound it was clear you know it's on the edge of the wilderness but then we were directed to start building these multi-layered dimensional portals with a series of crystals. And that took seven years for us to do that, or six years actually. And we had one portal, um, 11 dimensional layered. Um, it took 
as I said, six years to complete that. And we had another one that we were directed to start. One was a Lemurian portal. The other one was a galactic portal. And we built those over seven years. And then we were um, directed to open up what they call this gateway energy, which is like a Stonehenge. We had huge boulders come in and this whole space was opened up. And once that was opened up, it was like we're standing on our land, on our beach, watching these dimensional energies just being anchored. Like the whole, our land was changed. It was like we're on a different piece of property. It was, it was an unbelievable experience. And this energy of the galactic receiving station went a mile out into the water, beyond our beach, out into the water, meeting a Lemurian city, which exists a mile out opposite our house. So the galactic receiving station is a mile into the water all the way back through our three acres. And then we have this, we built, we're instructed to build this huge workroom and we have maybe 300, 400 crystals set in formations in the workroom. And that is also part of the galactic receiving station. So <laughs> it's been the most profound experience. And there's been times where we were told we couldn't live there. We had to be off the property. The energies were setting up. And then we were told we could come back and live there again. It's been an incredible journey of transmutation, transformation. We've talked, we've worked with the Lemurians that come down onto our beach from the Lemurian city. We've seen the galactic beings come in and connect. Of course, the Pleiadian ships come in. So we had an idea in our minds, a very limited perception of what our galactic receiving station was. And now since Uluru, I come home and it's like, I know it to be so much more than I could ever have imagined it to be. So we're now in, engaging with it in a totally different way um, because I'm transformed. So it's allowed me to interact through the galactic community and the galactic um, energies and the, and the whole galactic receiving station in a very different way. So it's been incredible. And are other people invited to, 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 to see that space or is it very much held sacred and private? It was totally private and sacred uh, for the first six years. Um, we started bringing groups where we were instructed, okay, now you can bring the people in. So we open six week long weekends a year only. So we only have six groups, no more than 25 people coming in at once um, over the some of the summer months. So that's where we're at. And um, I don't know if they'll suddenly say, okay, that's enough. We're not allowed to film it. We're not allowed to put it on our website. We're not allowed to film the boulders and put that in or, you know, so we haven't, we have no pictures of it to share with anybody. Um, and so the last two summers we've had uh, people and we have another groups coming up this summer, unless the uh, coronavirus may, we've already started to have cancellations for those, those groups. And I understand we may not be having them at all. So what, we'll just see. What types of crystals did you use? <laughs> Were they the Laramars and things like that? We had some of our crystals are 70 pounds. We have big crystals and slightly smaller crystals. Uh, we have clear quartz crystals. We have smoky quartz. We have, uh, well, they're all different uh, crystals that we have been instructed to buy probably over the last 12 years. And um, so we have, um, we have Lemurian, big Lemurian crystals. We have clusters, we have singles, we have, I mean, a, a huge selection. And then we have sacred designs that the Pleiadians have channeled through that I've put in there, creating this star systems energy chart, which is the entry point to connect to the galactic communities within the workroom that drives the crystals. The crystals are part of the galactic receiving station energy. So it's where we're, it's a total channeled experience of them show me exactly where the crystals have to be placed within the room. And then they come together to work with the entire property and with the Lemurian city, they channel through. So it's, it's really a, an active site. <laughs>
to put it mildly. Absolutely. No, that sounds amazing. Um, so are you, a, are you a flat earther then? Are you somebody that, that, that goes along with that theory? You know what? I wasn't until Uluru. And now I am very much aligned, not, not totally to the flat earthers, but I, I come into that understand it. There's a lot of illusion on what we've been showing the earth to be. I do know there is a, there is a multidimensional experience happening simultaneously, many of them in within well, earth you know we're in one reality but there are so many other uh things taking place on multi-dimensional levels within the same spaces that we are living in and i'm seeing that now and experiencing that now within our land within the galactic receiving station i'm starting to understand the multi-dimensional components that i missed before so i'm starting to see things differently uh, through direct experience and through a new clarity and understanding and perception um, that opened up for me in the cave at Uluru. Excellent. Okay. So I just want to take you right back again to your childhood um, because when I, when I've um, discovered that you'd, you know, that in your early years that you had been part of ritualistic sort of ceremonies um, I found that quite shocking, um, and I just wondered if you would be um, open to share what was going on during that process, and, and do you feel that that was all in divine order to prepare you for what was coming next? I actually do. I, I think, you know, I, I believe none of us are victims. The things are pre-agreed, and to, um, we, we have pre-agreements to go through experiences, some of them very difficult um, and harsh. And that experience as a child, from the time I was two to the time I was uh, 13, I was involved in that cult ritual abuse. And what it did was it broke me down completely um, so that my sense of myself totally was, was just disintegrated. I had no sense of my own power, of my own self. It was like I just was shattered. And I witnessed tremendous suffering in others, but I also went through tremendous suffering and hopelessness and helplessness over those years. So that when I emerged as a young adult, I really, there was nothing left of me. I was almost like really destroyed inside. And I feel like the, my own self-resurrection of my reconnection to my family of light and to my Pleiadian essence um, has allowed me to hold a very special um, platform for humanity um, because I've had direct experience of that tremendous suffering. Um, I think it's supported me in being able to work very deeply with groups of people to have broken a lot of the molds that the um, satanic ritual has held on the earth plane for lifetimes. Um, I was able to break through a lot of that programming and be liberated. A lot of help from Christ and Mother Mary for that to happen. Miracles that took place within me to, for me to come really take myself off the cross, to self-resurrect um, in this lifetime, which I hold that self-resurrection platform for others, for humanity. Um, it's enabled me to do that without that experience. Um, I would never want to go through it again, but it's brought me to an incredible place of understanding and, um, and who I am now in my wholeness. Um, so I carry all of that, yeah, the wounds of the healer. Um, so it stands me in good stead. It brings a humbleness to me as I work with groups and sometimes I work with people in a theatre with, you know, 800 people at a time and transmit that energy, that love outwards. And I can carry the platform to support heal others to be able to align to the platform I carry for self-healing because I know we're all ultimately to self-heal. So I'm very grateful um, for everything that I've experienced, not that I'd like to go through any of it again, but it's brought me to a very, 
very good place in myself, a great sense of power, um, a personal power of reconnection. Absolutely, because you can only take someone as far as you've been yourself. That's and right. I feel like, um, you know, you mentioned as well on your um, in your sort of biography on your website that you um, also experienced chronic lupus as well. Do you feel that like the disease was a manifestation of what you'd experienced during childhood? And when the Pleiadian energy came in, did you find that that was responsible for the transmutation of the cells and the, and the healing of, of that disease? The systemic lupus, I advanced to st systemic lupus and only given a few months to live. And I, my total, uh, I got a total awakening in the hospital that I had created something to kill myself um, because I was in such pain from uh, my, my, my past that I had not dealt with, that I'd kind of nailed into a, into a box and stored away. And so the understanding that I'd created something to kill myself allowed me to go to the understanding that I could also heal myself and self-resurrect. And then the Pleiadians and the light came to support me in my healing process. So that self-resurrection has helped me also support many people who uh, you know, have life-threatening illnesses. The thing is, while we stay victim, we can't heal. When we start to own our experience and the creation, I created the lupus, once I owned that creation, I took my power back. And that was the beginning of my self-healing. And then with the help of the Pleiadians and Mother Mary and Christ, um, I was transformed. Tra I went through a huge transmutation to self-heal. And I've been symptom-free of that systemic lupus for all those years now. Well, she's fantastic. So that just shows you, you know, through your own resurrection, you know, that you've been able to not only mentally and emotionally heal, but your physical body is also regenerated as well. So this is the power of, of working really with, um, you know, with, with self-acceptance and divine love, which I think is beautiful. Now, I, I guess my last question to you today, Christine, is, um, what's next? I mean, in the wake of the COVID-19 and, um, you know, the cancellation of a lot of the events and workshops that you, you know, planned in for 2020, what's next for you? And what's next for the planet? What, what can we expect? Well, for myself, I look forward to this. I feel a lot of joy. Um, yes, I'm under a lot of fi financial hardship now, but that that doesn't phase me. I trust and my Palladians are telling me I'm everything's in hand, all will be well. So I go back to Grand Marais tomorrow um, and I look at that space, a huge space of time for me to be in the light, um, to be in the, in, the, in the wilderness with that essence of um, my family of origin and we'll await my next step. I'll wait my next set of instructions it feels like I'm going to do some online classes that it's, it's, it needs, I need to get some energy out to the planet. So we'll see what happens with that. And for the rest of us, we are just beginning this, this process with the coronavirus. Um, and so the call is, that is going out, the Pleiadians are putting out the call that we have to let go of everything we think we know, everything we think we understand, all all of those old, all the concepts and open up to what's right in front of us in the moment and to trust because we can trust. We are all being held. Each one of us is being held and supported to take a different path, to step out of our norm and allow ourselves to be moving into a sacred flow of our destiny right now. And that's strong. That's something you can count on that will stabilize you in this seeming chaos of our third dimension here on the earth right now. That we can fortify ourselves and draw from the heart space the strength of our light to fully nurture and nourish ourselves and we can trust 
the steps we take and the guidance that's there for each one of you. No one out there doesn't have guidance. We all have a sacred guidance that's available now, especially with the light that's coming onto the planet to support us at this time for transmutation and for this resurrection process. So I just really want to just say to everyone, let go, use the conscious breath. There's a conscious breath. It's ah, in and out the mouth that says, yes, I'm going to let go. Yes, I'm willing to receive my light. That bypasses the ego mind and takes you directly into reconnection to the sacred that you are. And together as a collective, we can hold a space for humanity at this time. Absolutely. And, you know, again, <laughs> some of your most beautiful teachings are available within your own academy, <laughs> which is the Pleiadian Enlightenment Academy. So, you know, if anybody's searching for inspiration and wants this reconnection and to, to find <laughs> to do me. this, then... I urge all of you to have a look at the Pleiadian Enlightenment Academy. Now, I just wanted to show you something, Christine, because um, this is the new Dawn bottle in the color mirror system. Okay, now you're talking about trust and you're talking about light. Um, so each of the color mirrors has a different number. This is G28 and the 28 is about new beginnings. Um, but it's also, you know, the two and the eight add to a one, which is the beginning of a new cycle. And this is very much about the pale turquoise is, is trust um, in color therapy and it sits underneath. It's our, co our connection to our, our galactic families and, okay. you know, our universal unity consciousness. So, you know, really what, what this new dawn is all about is, is, is that reconnection to our, um, uh, to our soul families, to our galactic families and, and knowing that the support is there moving forward and and that's really the dawning of of the new age and you know it's been it's been on the cards <laughs> mystics psychics have been talking about it for many many years now and then on the other hand you know we've got you know there's a lot of fear mongering uh, about new world order and all of that and i think both both are, are possible and both are probable but it's really how how you choose to uh, align your you know uh, your and reconnect because you know, you could experience both realities within the same paradigm. That's true. And it's, it's up to us to choose, you know, drama or truth, you know. And the drama is fear and the truth is love. So we are naturally made from love and we are naturally a multidimensional being with our human experience and there's we have tremendous potential and now's the time for us to reach for that potential at this time because the veils are very thin <laughs> and i guess the final thing I, I really wanted to ask was if humanity <clears throat> almost falls into a bit of a spiral downward are the pleiadians are they going to reveal themselves? Are they, are they actually going to come in and, and, and show themselves, Christine? Or are they, are they just watching from afar, just giving us our, our space and free will? They absolutely have to because that's part of the, the Galactic um, Council oversee Earth and, and they're overseeing Earth's transition. The Pleiadians have no need to come and interfere. They are just here holding the energetic space and making it possible. They hold the doorways open for us to walk through and bring the understanding and clarity for us to take those steps. And ultimately it was always going to be us. <laughs> the Pleiadians always say, you are who you've been waiting for. You are who you've been waiting for. So we have to come back to ourselves. We have to reclaim our power and we can. It's waiting for us within our hearts. And so it's a glorious time. And the outcome is assured, the Pleiadians say. We will move through this time and come out victorious within our resurrection in this lifetime. 
So that is what they are saying. And they're saying this is the last time Earth will be a third dimensional planet. It will no longer be a planet that holds that uh, illusion. It's going to totally transform in our lifetime. And I, I've, I feel that and I see that in our future. Beautiful. I love it, Christine. Well, look, thank you so much for bringing so much hope with your, with your wisdom and, and that, you know, the help of the, the Pleiadian perspective. It's, it's been brilliant. And, you know, once again, all I can, all I can do is I can't wait to, to see, to see you when you come to Perth. I'm definitely going to book. Well, hey, and let's absolutely connect um, because I couldn't, I, I feel like it's, it's important for us to connect in person. And I just send you love and blessings for the work that you are doing. And the Pleiadians are saying to me right now that they are holding that space, that sacred space around you. Your mission is very important and not to underestimate what you're doing in your work here. Okay, thank you. I really appreciate you saying that, Christine. That's awesome. We'll love back to them as well. So yeah, I'll uh, what, let's watch this space, and and uh, yeah, I'm sure our paths will cross in the not too distant future. I know they will. Hey, much love to you. Yeah, thanks bye again, bye. Christine. Bye bye. Bye bye.